We are here at the Galerie du Tco on the Ile Saint-Louis in Paris in an exhibition of the works of Georges Noël. There are works from all periods. It's like a mini retrospective of about 20 paintings, paintings which have never been shown in Paris before. Georges Noël was a French painter who was born in 1924 and who died in 2010 at the age of 86. He is of the same generation as Simon Antaille, Martin Barré, Armand, and Yves Klein, for example. But in view of the fact that he spent 13 years in the United States, he lived and worked and exhibited in New York between 1969 and 1983. His work is less known here on the French scene than that of many of his contemporaries. During uh, Georges Noël's long and stylistically varied career, there are three elements which were constant to his work. The first was his interest in materials and his invention of new mediums. The second was his interest in systems of signs, systems of writing, and in particular, those which we do not understand and which carry, according to him, emotion, mystery, magic. And the third was his reference to nature. Georges Noël arrived in Paris in 1956 from Pau in the southwest of France where he grew up. And one of the first encounters that he made was with the work of Jean Dubuffet. And I think that Jean Dubuffet, who was then working on the Matérologie and the Texturologie, and thus covering the whole canvas uh, with a very thick layer of paint. It appealed to Georges as a way of getting away from Beaux-Arts conventions and figurative painting, which he had been doing up to that time. So this painting is from 1958, and I think it, he did it actually as a finger painting, and this one is from 1959, which is much closer to a Dubuffet in a sense, and yet it's, the surface is a bit more delicate. And as we see, we see these graffiti coming out, which will be something which Georges will be very interested in. He discovered Brassai's photographs of graffiti and the idea of an anonymous graffiti, which is an expression nonetheless of human desire and human energy. That was something that interested him very much. In 1960-61, uh, Georges discovered or invented his true medium, which was a mixture of raw pigments, sand, and glue. He mixed them together and he would spread them across the canvas. And what he liked about them is that they dried faster, they gave a matte surface. He had felt that with oil paint, he couldn't control it the way he wanted to. And this gave a matte surface on which he could inscribe his own graffiti. Georges was very interested in primitive cultures, in archaic cultures, in pre-Columbian art, in African art, and all the signs and systems of signs, the codification of signs, which we do not understand, but from which we get a charge of energy and a charge of magic, as he said, a magic we do not understand, but which transforms us in the experience of observing them. And that is what he wanted to find in his paintings. This painting comes from a series of magic windows and magic doors that he did where, because he thought of Egyptian tombs where there was a sacred space at the end of a corridor. So for him, there was a kind of feeling of the sacred in his handwriting also, which may seem strange for that period. But um, Georges did have a mysterious and somewhat mystical sense. What is interesting about this painting, which is called Endgame, and which is from 1991, is you see Georges using the same material and the same graffiti and the same manner of incising the surface. I should say that Georges worked very, very fast because this was a fast drying medium. He had a very nervous temperament. He was very rapid, and so he had to finish the paintings while the medium was still moist. And I think you see this here. The introduction of random and chance was also very important. And I think that between these two paintings, 30 years apart, 
you see the same energy, but of course, very different subjects. Nature was very important in Georges' inspiration, more implicitly than explicitly, I would say. When he did this painting, I'm not sure that he was thinking of a British garden, which is the title of the work, and which probably came afterwards. They are all colors of nature, and I think that when he finished the painting, he said, well, this is a British garden. I think that growing up in the Pyrenees, as he did, he had a very strong sense of nature, even though it, it comes out implicitly in his paintings more than explicitly. Towards the end of his life, which why don't we say in the, in the 90s, because actually after about 2005 he painted less, Georges became much more interested in a cosmic space, so to speak, and in one might say cosmic subjects as opposed to the nature of the here and now. And he did a series of paintings such as this one, which is called The White Angel. Once again, it's a totally arbitrary title. But what is interesting is that obviously we're talking about the sky, we're talking about constellations, again implicitly, not explicitly. And the interesting thing is that he found a new material, which was a kind of a gravel that had mica in it, so that there is a, a scintillation, a kind of a, a twinkling of the sky, so to speak. And then later in the 90s, he moved to a period where he was much more transparent and immaterial and where you see the same kind of organization in a sense, but the work is diaphanous and ephemeral, and I would say, as I said earlier, dematerialized. And that corresponds to the late, the very latest period of his work. <laughs>